coming. Bert, yeah, Bert, the one and only. I'm here with my buddy Frank Galley, the owner of Sniper's Hide. Sniper's Hide is the most authoritative and legitimate website dedicated to the long-range shooter and long-range shooting. Frank not only launched this website, he has a background as a Marine Corps sniper. We're here today at the Sniper's Hide Cup, a match that he helps put on, and we're going to talk a little bit about marksmanship, specifically about the big X factor, which is the wind. Frank has come out with a new iBook called Wind Reading Basics for the Tactical Shooter. Frank, tell us a little bit about what inspired this. Uh, wind, like you said, is the biggest X factor, so I wanted to address that and kind of cut through some of the myths because a lot of things get repeated over and over again, the formulas. When you're in the field and you're on the firing line, that's the wrong time to do a formula. So I wanted to address that because now we have people with computers and things. So I break down the wind into two categories, the art department and the science department. So we look at the science behind it in a real easy to understand way, but then we explain the art and how terrain affects the wind and you know how it's subjective. Everybody sees it slightly different downrange, but, but then I go into a, a place where I give you a diagram to follow so you can help yourself learn the wind and successfully dope the wind to make that shot. Okay, so let's break that down then into the two components. When you talk about the science, are you talking about the, the figures that a, a ballistics calculation program gives you or something else? What, what is that? Uh, the science involves the formulas that we've all seen and used. It, it could be uh, the science of the angle of a wind flag on a high power range, the math formula used for that, as well as ballistic calculators. That's a big part of our industry right now, so I do address ballistic calculators in depth there and, and talk about it. Um, but then the art goes into when you're actually in the field. And so the art is really kind of uh, the skills that someone can develop in a practical situation to really suss out what's going on with the wind. Absolutely. Um, if, if you look at the old model of trying to learn the wind, it was getting cases of ammo, going to the range and just shooting and shooting and shooting, which will cost a, a lot of money and take you tens of years. Uh, this is to help you have a foundation to get you to that end result faster. So we say, listen, here's what the science is doing. Here's the, the factors in that art department, how the terrain will affect it, how a wind gradient affects it. So when the bullet is going up at max ord, that you, you know, to tell the new shooter who may not know, the velocity's higher up there. We're not shooting bullets across the ground at 1,000 yards. They're going you know, for a 308, 15 feet in the air. That's another wind gradient. So um, we, we need them to understand that. And, and if you point that out to them, then they can, they can now visualize and say, well, this might be why my dope didn't work. So, you know, it's two miles an hour quicker up there. So I have to increase my call and things like that. Right. And, and for the most part, when people are getting their wind readings, often they only have the benefit of getting the wind reading at their shooting position. Obviously extremely important to know what's going on where the bullet's leaving the muzzle, but there's a lot more that can be happening downrange, right? Absolutely. Uh, I start everything with you, the shooter. That's your foundation. It's the only place in the entire flight of the bullet where you can read the wind to within one mile an hour. Everything else downrange is that, that guess. So the science is using that Kestrel wind meter and actually doping the wind at your position to better than one mile an hour. And what would you say, you know, for, for guys who are maybe kind of schooled in some of the, the older sort of formulas, knowledge, what are some of the biggest kinds of misconceptions or, or myths or mistakes that people make? Mainly around the constant. They think that constant will work with anything and they don't realize that the constant has to be adjusted for each bullet. And so I put in the formula there to get the constant. The, the, the funny part with that though is you have to already have the wind hold for the bullet to start to work the formula backwards to get the correct constant so it's sort of self-defeating. They'll just pull this constant that comes out of a data book or something that's been handed down since 1978 and don't realize, you know, what bullet that's for. And so, you know, there's a lot more work that goes into it. And the work is something that you're already doing. So, you know, you do end up doing it twice. And, and I'm trying to get people out of the need to do it twice. So in terms of what you're laying out for people, I mean, just kind of break it down for us. What, what, are, what are like the the handful of things that anybody can do to become better at reading the wind and mastering it? 
Um, it's it's number one, uh, understanding what the, the wind is doing on the ground. That, again, terrain features and wind gradients, but then how that it's that prior proper planning making charts and not trying to do longhand math in the field. It's, um, you know, correctly putting the right inputs into your ballistic computer so that you'll get a solid uh, solution out of it. A lot of mistakes in inputting with ballistic computers, so I talk about that. Um, I go over some of the rule of thumbs, and, and the rule of thumbs are really good, but they're really um, kind of a gross adjustment for the wind. They're not very fine or precise. So we talk about uh, several of the rule of thumbs that are out there. And, um, you know, and, and I give you that sort of uh, objective look at each aspect, the longhand formula, the rule of thumb, the ballistic computer. That way you can decide which one's best for you. That's excellent. And where can we get this book? Uh, the book's available in iTunes and on the iBook store. It's, uh, it's an iPad only right now because I created it on a Mac. So it, it's, it's for the Mac and the iPad people, um, but it's in iTunes. And give us the title once more. It's uh, Wind Reading Basics for the Tactical Shooter. Okay, Wind Reading Basics for the Tactical Shooter by Frank Galley. Trust me, you're going to want to take a look at this. Frank knows his stuff. He's taught me a lot over the years. I've got the book. I've been flipping through it and uh, up in my game, and you can up your game too.